Hi, I'm Andrew Potochnik and welcome to the new studios here at TimberCon in Melbourne. The obvious starting point when you're getting into wood turning is your lathe. Lots of other things you're going to need, but your lathe is your primary machine. So what do you look for? This is a fairly entry level type of lathe. It has plenty of good things going for it. For starters, a solid headstock, cast iron, cast iron bed, cast iron tailstock, large locking levers that are easy to operate and lock firmly. The tool rest, quite a nice eight inch or 200 mil distance, well machined. These little locking levers, they also are spring loaded so you can move them around into other positions. And the other thing is, this little lever here and these levers. When you get a bit older and your fingers aren't quite what they used to be, you don't want tiny little bits to grip onto. There's plenty of mass here, plenty of size so you can get lots of purchase and lock everything securely. Speaking of locking securely, large locking lever on the saddle, which slides really nicely. The tool rest has a one inch or 25 mil post. So there's plenty of support for the tools and you'll never get any movement. It'll stay put once you've locked it into position. As you can see, I've got this lathe set up with all the additional bits. But what do you get as a baseline? Well, the lathe starts from here, goes up to here, and it goes from here to here. That's what you get to begin with. Then you can also add an extension bed, which will give you another 600 millimeters of distance. And then there's also the stand. So really, if you don't want to buy the whole kit and caboodle and you buy just the, the machine itself, you can make your own stand, you can mount it onto a bench so that if you don't want to use it all or if you're not using it all the time, you can wheel it out of the way or whatever you like to do. The base model of the lathe might seem quite small, but you'd be surprised how much distance you get between centres. For instance, if I get my handy tape measure out, 510 millimetres. So your coffee table height is about 450 millimetres height, so you really can turn a coffee table leg on this lathe. The extra 600 millimetres on the extension bed gives you a whopping, well, over 1100 millimetres between centres. So that's more than ample for most jobs that you'll want to do using this sort of lathe. The other thing that you'd need to be aware of is the distance over the bed. So this lathe does provide you with 355 millimetres clearance. So if you get your old uh, multi-language tape measure out, that works out to be about 13 and a half inches, which is quite a lot of space. Another of good things about this lathe is the thread size. It's a metric 30. So with the four inch or 120 mil face plate that you get, you can simply thread that on and then you also have the option of tightening a couple of little grub screws here and those all those little spanners fit on this little caddy that's on this side of the lathe and you're ready to go. Some of the smaller lathes might not have compatible uh, components. With this lathe, you've got everything that fits onto a full-size lathe. For instance, a number two Morse taper in the headstock, a number two Morse taper in the tailstock, and by the way, the tailstock also has an auto-eject function, which means you don't need a knockout bar to take your centre out. But as well as that, there are more features, they keep coming. For instance, the quill has markings on it so you can know exactly how far you're going if you're using the lathe to drill holes into your work. People are always concerned about the power of a lathe. If you want to find out exactly how powerful this motor is, have a look at the specifications on the website. But the important thing is you've got a two-step pulley system here. And on the pulley, you've also got an indexing feature. So if you want to divide your piece of work up into segments, you've got the, the ability to do it accurately. Once you've set the pulley to the speed you want, and you do get a choice of two speeds, one will take you from zero to 1200 RPM, and the other one will take you from zero to 3200 RPM. That comes complements of a variable speed switch. So 
I'm just winding the speed up and hardly any sound. And I'm at 620 revs and if I go all the way, this little dial here tells me that we're up to 1200 revs. So that gives you plenty of variation for working on spindles which need to run at a higher speed through to the low speeds that you need when you're sanding. While this lathe has most of the features that you'd need of any lathe, there's probably one little problem that you might encounter and that is if you're thinking of doing quite large pieces of work, especially if they're out of round. But don't worry, we have a lathe for that too. The blocking mechanism and spin the lathe around and there you are. You can now work outboard and this will give you an extra 150 mil swing taking it up to just over 710 mils. But for more information on this lathe, click on the links below and don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, I'm Andrew Potochnik and um, I'll see you next time. Bye.